Hi guys, this is Rod Saunders from Jew and Greek. I hope everybody's doing well today. I want to talk to you about a very famous man in the evangelical world. In fact, he's been referred to as the Pope of evangelicalism. John MacArthur is one of the leading voices in the world of Reformed or Calvinist theology. He's the pastor of Grace Community Church in Sun Valley, California, the president of the Master's University and the Master's Seminary, the host of the daily radio broadcast, Grace to You, and the author of dozens of books on theology, along with the MacArthur Study Bible, as well as being a frequent guest on various talk shows to present the view of a prominent evangelical minister. This guy is busy. However, in October of 2013, he took time out of his busy schedule to host a conference called Strange Fire, where the focus was basically on trashing anybody and everybody who identifies with the exercise of gifts of the spirit, or charismata, hundreds of millions of us around the world. You see, John is a cessationist which means that he believes that the gifts of the Spirit ceased operation at the close of the Apostolic Age. Here's a sampling of his opinion on charismatics. How did the Holy Spirit work in Christ? The reality that these people are lost in this system, and they're throwing the word Jesus all over the place. Did He knock Him down? Uh, I don't know how those people survive the fire that should come down from heaven. Did He make Him look drunk? There are no more apostles. Did He cause Him to fall or flop? This is a movement made up largely of non-Christians. Or roll? That has nothing to do with Christianity, nothing to do with God. Or laugh hysterically? The charismatic movement has stolen the Holy Spirit and created a golden calf, and they're dancing around the golden calf as if it were the Holy Spirit. Or bark? They seek feelings? Blessings, experiences, healings, angels, and not Christ or Babel. But they think they have a free run at dishonoring and abusing the Holy Spirit, apparently. Or talk gibberish. It's mysticism, if you want to put a label on it. Right. And that would be a classic label, mysticism. You know, it does amaze me that the movement has survived the way it has. I just have to... People say to me, why doesn't God just strike these people down? That is pagan. So according to Johnny Mac, all of us charismatics, Pentecostals and Neo-Pentecostals are essentially deluded to think that God is speaking to people or ministering through people via spiritual gifts and the ministries of apostles and prophets 1900 years after the expiration date on those gifts. In fact, the vast majority aren't even saved, according to John. That these people are lost. Justin Peters concurs. This is very, very serious, and the people who are in this movement, the vast majority of them are not saved. Now, because I have so much material to go through, I'm going to make this into a three-part series. In this first video, I want to tell you a bit about the man behind the cessationist rhetoric, and in a second video, I'll present my responses to the comments made in the Strange Fire Conference back in 2013, and in the third video, I'm going to respond to Nathan Bucenet's session at the Strange Fire Conference where he tries to disprove continuationism theologically. So let's get started. Who is John MacArthur? Well, he's the son of a minister named Jack MacArthur, who actually appeared in a movie in 1972 about Marjo Gortner, a fraudulent faith healer who outed himself and the tricks he used to con people out of their money. Mr. MacArthur voiced his condemnation of the boy preacher in that documentary, which tells us that John MacArthur comes by his sentiments quite naturally. John MacArthur is also a fifth cousin to General Douglas MacArthur, which might help explain his combative nature and his militant leadership style. He studied theology at Biola Seminary, where he earned a master's degree. Johnny Mac became the pastor of Grace Community Church in 1969, and through his gifting as an expository Bible teacher and church leader, he took the church from a relatively small church to a thriving Reformed megachurch 
in less than 10 years. In the process, he also became a well-known author. He has several views on theology that are considered controversial. The first would be his view on the sovereignty of God. Now, since he's a Calvinist, he believes in predestination and is convinced that God sovereignly predestines that some, known as the elect, will be saved and others will be eternally lost. Now, as appalling as that view is to Arminians like me who believe in free will, we recognize that a significant chunk of evangelicals are in fact Calvinists. So while we don't agree with them, we can still accept them as brothers in the faith because they hold to the essential doctrines like the deity of Christ, the virgin birth, the trinity, etc. But John has said some other things that have upset people, like his claim that you could take the mark of the beast and still be saved. Another thing he said that has raised a few eyebrows is that the blood of Jesus doesn't have any intrinsic power. He also said that we can pray to the Holy Spirit, even though the Bible says to pray to the Father in the name of the Son. But probably the most controversial theology that John MacArthur has espoused is Lordship Salvation. The idea that if you haven't submitted to Jesus' will in every area of your life, you aren't saved. Because if he's not Lord of everything, he's not Lord at all. Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. In other words, abandon all your own ambition, all your own will, all your own direction, your own choices, and totally and fully submit your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. It is to say it's the end of me and I commit my life to Christ to follow him whatever the cost, even if it's a cross, and to obey him. The gospel is he wants to deliver you from your sins which are going to condemn you to eternal hell. And until a person understands the reality of their lostness and fully comes to grips with that, that they have sinned against God, violated God's law, that they cannot remedy that, that they are headed for hell, that they will never have any purpose in this life, any meaning in this life, and certainly in the life to come, apart from salvation through Jesus Christ, they don't reach a level of desperation, uh, which drives them to a true salvation. He promoted this view in a book called The Gospel According to Jesus. This teaching caused quite a bit of controversy back in the 1980s, and it prompted one of my favorite theologians, Charles Ryrie, to write a book in response called So Great Salvation. Lordship salvation is considered justification by works to most people because it puts the emphasis on our efforts rather than on the substitutionary work of Christ. In this next clip, We'll see John and his sidekick, Phil Johnson, discussing John's history of speaking against charismatics. Your first series on the charismatic movement, as far as I can tell, was 1971. You mm -hmm. preached on that issue, 1971, for the first time. Then you did an extended series in 1975, which became the basis for the book, The Charismatics, mm -hmm. which was published, I think, in 1978 or thereabout. Then. Uh, it was 1992 when Charismatic Chaos came out. Hmm. So if you, if you follow the trail of this, it's like every five or at the very most ten years you've dealt with this issue. So according to Phil, John MacArthur has been talking about Charismatics since 1971. In 1978, he wrote The Charismatics, which eventually was reincarnated as Charismatic Chaos in 1992. He then produced this conference in 2013. This means that he has been venting along these lines for nearly half a century. I actually bought a copy of his book, Charismatic Chaos, back in the 1990s because I wanted to see what kind of case he might have against charismatics. It turned out to be little more than a diatribe against the charismatic movement rather than a serious analysis of Pentecostal theology and featured many of the same tactics he uses today, taking fringe antics within the movement and presenting them as the norm, and claiming that it's all based on experience and feelings, rather than any solid basis in scripture. He then states that all instances of tongues are fake because tongues was a temporary gift that ceased in the first century. 
He said, I am convinced by history, theology, and the Bible that tongues ceased in the apostolic age. And when it happened, they terminated altogether. The contemporary charismatic movement does not represent a revival of biblical tongues. It is an aberration similar to the practice of counterfeit tongues at Corinth. What counterfeit tongues? The Bible doesn't say that there were counterfeit tongues at Corinth. It just says that the gift of tongues wasn't being used properly. And then Paul showed them the proper way to use the gift. In his 2013 book, Strange Fire, MacArthur reiterates his contempt for the charismatic movement, dismissing it as a scam. In recent decades, the charismatic movement has infiltrated mainstream evangelicalism and exploded onto the global scene at an alarming rate. It is the fastest growing religious movement in the world. Charismatics now number more than half a billion worldwide. Yet the gospel that is driving those surging numbers is not the true gospel. And the spirit behind them is not the Holy Spirit. What we are seeing is in reality the explosive growth of a false church, as dangerous as any cult or heresy that has ever assaulted Christianity. The charismatic movement was a farce and a scam from the outset. It has not changed into something good. So according to Johnny Mac, people who teach that the gifts of the Spirit are still in operation today are just as dangerous as any heretic in church history. And the movement itself is in fact a false church, meaning the people aren't saved and they don't worship the same God. With that in mind, Let's take a look at some of the statements made at the Strange Fire Conference in the next video.